Rome Research has been getting a lot of attention the last few weeks for being a tool that you can develop networked thoughts and connect ideas together. I've been talking about it on my podcast process a little bit. I've been using it myself. And frankly, it's a really powerful tool for doing just that. If you're not interested in paying the price tag for Rome Research, there are other options out there that may fit your needs. I've compiled a list of some of these applications so you can take a look and make an informed decision about what might work best for you. There are four criteria that I had in mind when putting together the list for today's video. The first one is to have an, a place where it's easy to capture your thoughts or ideas or things that you're learning from books or podcasts and have it easily integrate within the system. Second is the ability to actually link between notes in some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to be full on backlinks or unlinked references like Rome Research has, but some kind of linking can at least help you connect thoughts and ideas or different notes together for it. Number three for me anyway, is the ability to outline or easily structure information. Rome's advantage here is that you're writing right into an outline. It allows you to quickly get thoughts out. I personally gravitate towards outlines or mind map sort of styles because they're a little bit more free form in how you can get information out. I don't necessarily like to commit to writing paragraphs or full thoughts in a note and in a note taking software. So having the ability to get a thought out and then easily retrieve it later to be able to flesh it out further is a hard requirement. Number four, the software needs to be non nerdy. What do I mean by that? Well, there's lots of reference software or personal knowledge management tools that are out there that require either a significant investment of your finances or time to get up and running effectively. That's something that not everybody has, but there's significant value in having some kind of a note taking or personal knowledge management system, especially when you work in a remote work field, you're dealing with information constantly all day long. And so it's good to have a place where you can sort through that information and make valuable connections out of it. So that's the criteria for today's list. Let's get into the contenders. The first contender on today's list is the archive. Now the archive is a software by the guys who write uh, Zettelkasten.de, which is a resource online for creating a Zettelkasten or a slip box. The idea there comes from Nicholas Lumen, who was a researcher who had this massive box of note cards that allowed him to connect ideas together. He basically would take notes down on the cards and have an identifier on them and then would put them into this box in a specific order. And then he would revisit that box to learn information from it. The archive is a fork of NV Alt, which is a old school software from Brett Terpstra that is primarily driven by plain text notes. Now there's a lot of power in this piece of software but there's some challenges with it too that might be a little bit more nerdy. Let's take a look here. So first you can see here, this is one of the notes that is automatically created when you download and open the archive. There's a lot of interesting stuff to read in here. If you have downloaded, it, take a look at it. Some cool features is that you can link to stuff through tags. You can have links. It's based on Markdown. So if you're familiar with the Markdown syntax, it's very easy to get started with it. And then probably the most important thing here is that you can do some wiki linking. So I've done some playing around here, created a test note. Now you can see it has this interesting note title here. It's uh, called an ID. It's automatically generated. And the idea here is to have a way to differentiate your notes if they have a similar name because the way the archive works for its linking is it uses this search bar. So you can see I have some wiki note links created here. I've linked to the acknowledgements note. I've linked to this other note here, the welcome to the archive. If I click on that, it will pull it up and it will also show the other notes that it's linked to because it's not doing a link, so to say, it's just using search. Pretty clever little feature here. One of the downsides of using the wiki links here is if I try to create, say, the acknowledgements link, it doesn't automatically create the wiki link for you. So you have to be aware 
of what note you are linking to. Also, if you try to create a note like I did up here with the archive that is not created and you try to click on it, it doesn't actually create the note for you. You have to select that and then you have to hit enter and then you can start typing whatever you want in there. If I could type correctly, that would be really nice for the video, right? So that's an interesting piece about the archive. It doesn't do auto linking. You just click the wiki links. I think it's kind of meh for my use. It can be a little bit more heady than what I was thinking of in having some kind of a personal knowledge management software. However, if you're really big on plain text, you want to have the ability to port your Zettelkasten or your notes between different pieces of software. For example, if you want to use something on iOS that is a plain text piece of software to access and edit those notes, you can do that when using the archive. I think it's a great improvement on NV Alt, which has been around for a very long time, but it's still very heavily text driven. If you don't need a lot of features, if you want to have a reliance on identifiers, you don't need auto completions and you want more manual involvement with the notes that you're taking, the archive is actually going to be a really great option for you. Next on the list here is Zettler. Zettler is a free and open source piece of software that's very customizable. There's lots of different settings that you can get into. There's lots of different ways that you can configure it to handle your notes differently. I have relatively the basic configuration here that it comes with outside of the box, and I used it to open up the directory of notes that the archive created automatically when I installed that. So you can see the portability of the archive when using the software. And then also too, Zettler would be just as portable as the archive because it relies on a lot of the same features. One thing that's nice about Zettler is that it has a nice design sense to it. Compared to the archive, which is a little bit more utilitarian, Zettler, you can see on the screen here, just has a, an aesthetic about it that's appealing. You can see that tags and links are generated very similar to how they are in the archive. In order to click on them, you have to hold down the option key on Mac and then you can open them. See, it looks for everything that's tagged the archive here. So you've got the acknowledgements node and the welcome to the archive. Again, this is Zettler. One thing that's very similar to how the archive works, but it has some improvements is how wiki linking takes place. So for example, we'll take that note I was trying to wiki link in previously. If I type double brackets, you do get autocomplete of everything that's in the folder that you have open inside of Zettler. That's really convenient. You can arrow down, you can link to a note, and then you get a nice fancy wiki link there. Again, you have to hold down the option key and click on it to see the references. Another cool thing that um, the archive does as well, but it also happens here in Zettler, is if you click on a wiki link that you have linked in multiple notes, it does a search on it and it shows you all the places where it's linked. So it's not backlinking like it is in Rome, but it's very similar. It does show you where those note links live because it functions on search. Now, I would have to say with Zettler that it might be a little nerdy for people. There's a lot of variables to set up. There's a lot of heavy emphasis on plain text here, which is really portable, but it can get a little nerdy to get things to work. The other thing here is if we create a note, create a new file, it does create it with an ID. And so again, it's pretty heavily reliant on IDs uh, for your note creation. It can be really helpful to keep things in the context and in a specific flow inside of your note taking software, but it can also make it a little bit more difficult to navigate. If that's for you, awesome. Zettler is a free open source piece of software available on multiple platforms focuses on plain text. So you have the capability to cross between different platforms and different softwares very easily. It's a nicely designed interface, but if it's a little too nerdy for you, there's some other options that you can take a look at. Next up on the list is Dynalist. 
if you're familiar with Roam Research at all, Dynalist is going to be very similar. Dynalist is an outliner by nature, which makes it really easy to just get information out. You can create a bullet, you can zoom into that bullet, and if I'm doing it right, you can start writing more underneath of that, and then go back up, and you can kind of see, you can collapse, you can expand. It's really easy to kind of navigate your information through Dynalist. You have tags that you can utilize here, so you can search by them. It'll search either just flat in the document that you have, or you can search inside of all documents that you have over here. That is one interesting thing about Dynalist is that you create documents and then you can go super deep with the zoom in levels. Dynalist is pretty interesting because you can also wiki link between different bullets. Let me show you how that works. So if I type double brackets and I'm gonna look at the essentials list, you see I'm starting to type essentials. I can just click on that and it automatically populates the link there. The thing is that's a little different from Rome is that it doesn't do backlinks, but you do have the ability to link to specific bullets, which is really quite nice. I'd honestly say that Dynalist would probably be a strong contender for somebody looking to have some kind of a personal knowledge management system that's similar to Rome Research, but isn't Rome. It gives you a lot of the features and functionality that Rome has without some of the bigger conceptual stuff that Rome has. I think you could have a workable system in here with the wiki linking, with the outlining. It's easy to get started with it. It does have an iOS application that is reasonable to work with. It's not the best from playing around with it, uh, but it is pretty decent and it is in the web browser. So regardless of what platform you're on or if you have to switch between platforms, it will work for you. Plus there is some pretty good keyboard shortcut support. As you can see over here, there's a quick menu that you can get to with auto completion and picking dates, different keyboard shortcuts to get to different functionality. Very quite nice to use that. It's also fairly affordable as well. You can use a free plan on it. You can upgrade to pro for some additional features, including I think mind mapping as well, which is very interesting. I also do believe the creators of Dynalist are coming out with a piece of software called Obsidian, which is supposed to be very similar to Rome Research and how it works. I would have to say, like I mentioned, that Dynalist is a contender. You do have to figure out your document structure a little bit up front but you can dynamically link between things. You can't create a page. I forgot to mention this earlier. You can't create a page from a dynamic link, but it can link to a bullet, which makes it really not too big of a deal there. Next on the list for applications is Bear. Bear is a note-taking tool that's been around for quite a while now. It's been around for a few years. They are iOS and macOS only. They are looking at having a web client, I'm aware. So that is a limitation to be aware of it. It also is fairly heavily reliant upon Markdown, but it's fairly easy to get going with in that. Bear has some interesting features when it comes to wiki links and navigating notes. You can link between notes very easily with autocomplete, which we'll talk about. You can link to headings within a note, which is also very fancy to be able to do. You can also tag items as well to kind of bundle notes together. If you're looking at something like a Zettelkasten for your note-taking setup, this might be an option for you. If you're looking at something a little bit simpler, this has some capabilities that you might be interested in as well. So in looking at Bear, there's a few interesting things that are stand out about it. I already mentioned the fact that you can wiki link and tag things. That's pretty cool. So you can see here, I've got a wiki link pointing to this note applications uh, note. If I click on that, it takes me right there. What if I do this? If I go note taking applications, I can link to myself apparently, uh, 0512. Pretty cool that I can link to it, but also if I go back to this note here and change the name, the wiki links auto update the name wherever they are located. Now, if I want to add a tag to this to group it with other note software notes, I can do that. If you have a space in your tag, it just is 
book ended with the pound sign and then you have it all available over here. Now, granted, it's not gonna do so, too much filtering because I don't have anything really in the database at this point in time, but Bear is a pretty powerful piece of software when it comes to that. One thing to note about Bear is that they don't have support for backlinks right now. There has been some talk that maybe in this informational menu that there might be references that are noted in here. It'd be a good place to do it without destroying your note content. There is a script, which I'll put in the description of this video, that does allow you to create backlinks. However, there is some risk with it. It's not directly being supported by the developer. It also does rewrite the content of your notes, so there is a risk of data loss with it. However, that being said, if you're willing to put in the time working with Bear, and you're willing and it works for you to have a single list of notes, uh, that can be organized by tags and linked together, you could have a very functional personal knowledge management system within this tool. Next up on the list is TiddlyWiki with the plugin Stroll. Now I will tell you straight up out front that if you are not a fan of getting into the nitty gritty of technical things, this might not be the best one for you. It is a single HTML file that contains TiddlyWiki and the plugins that are involved with it, which is really cool. It also makes it very small and portable. But if you're looking to have this available on multiple devices, you either need to host it somewhere in the cloud or do some sort of sync magic with Google Drive or Dropbox. And then also you might have some issues saving into it using certain browsers as well due to protections that uh, they have implemented to prevent these types of things. However, if you are looking for a near Rome clone, this is the one you're looking for. You have bi-directional links with autocomplete. You can change the names automatically when you change the names of those titlers or notes. Uh, you can have notes popped out into a sidebar, which I'll show you here. Pretty cool. You can have multiple notes over there. You can have multiple notes in the left sidebar. It's extremely flexible in its user interface, which is really quite something that's nice. The backlinks you can even customize. So you can see down here that there's backlinks between these different pages, as you saw that I clicked on. But over in the right hand pane here, you can choose different ways to show them. So you can choose to see the full text of those notes or full text under these little sliders. You can hide backlinks altogether. You can just show the link in the context of the note, or you can have simple links, which is how it's defaulted to. You can also add a daily journal note. So you can say at this moment in time, if I already have this note open, it will automatically link to it. I can say, this is cool. And then I can close that note. You can see that I have a backlink there. It's already visible pretty nice to see. However, it can get a little funny to deal with, I think, because the editor is a little weird. There's a lot of different stuff with it. There's different content types. You have to think about some of these things and it does add a little bit of extra friction, but if you're able to get past that when working with uh, titlers and TiddlyWiki, this is a really powerful piece of software self-hosted as well, which means you're not relying on the syncing services or infrastructure of other companies. It's also open source. So you, if you have questions about what's in the code, or if you have questions for the developer on what certain things do and how they do it, you can definitely figure that out. TiddlyWiki is one piece of software, as I mentioned, that might be a little too nerdy, but if you're looking for a Rome-like experience, this is the thing. If you're not wanting to go with Rome Research, but you're looking for a software that allows you to get almost all of that experience out of it, this is it. You can also extend TiddlyWiki with other uh, applications such as a Tiddly Map. I don't have that installed in here because this is just the uh, default one that is on the web that we can play with. It's a little demo. But you can have a, a mind map basically that shows all the note links that are there similar to the graph overview in Rome Research. Last on the list today is Notion. Notion, if you're familiar with it, is a very powerful piece of software that allows you not only to create pages, 
but also databases inside of it. And I feel like Notion would be a high contender for a lot of people out there because it's not super nerdy to get into. I mean, you can get pretty nerdy with it and I'll show you that in just a second, but you can also structure things a little bit more aesthetically. It is a nice piece of software to use. It's nice to look at. It's web-based so you can get access to it on lots of different platforms. Uh, you do have the ability to link between notes. You can get information to it pretty easily. There's a little web clipper that Notion has where you can actually clip straight into a database, which is super nice. The big thing with Notion that I think would make it more effective with uh, creating some kind of a personal knowledge store is a database. And so you're going to have to get a little into the technical details of it, but it's not too difficult to set up. So what I've done here is actually in just the course of about two minutes, set up a Notion note library database. And here's what it looks like. I've got a column field for a name, which is required. Then the created time, which is a specific database field that just shows you when the note was created. I've got some tags, which is a multi-select field, which you can select multiple off of. And then I have a couple fields here called a database relation. Now, what the database relation does is I have it set up to relate this database to itself. I can show you quickly how that is set up. So if I go into relation and I click select a database and I search for note library, since I'm linking to itself, it's gonna ask you this question. What this is gonna enable us to do is create backlinks to other nodes. So if I select create a new property, it will create two properties in here, one for the link to something and one for the link back from something. I'm gonna cancel this because I already have it created and I wanted to show you what this looks like. If I go into a welcome note, you can see there's not much here and I don't have any links to anything, but I do have this backlink that shows another note. And that's because in another note, if I go to that one, I have linked to welcome note. It's pretty easy to do that. Now I've also linked to it down here using the slash link to page command, which then allows me to search for things. I can just do this one, it's linking to itself. But if I click on that, it'll open up the note as well. I can go back here, you know, you can add tags, uh, whatever you want to. Um, we'll just put some information in there. Um, but again, you can add all of this information into a Notion database and have it filterable. So that's another thing that is really nice about Notion databases is that not only can you link to stuff, you can get uh, information from outside on the web pretty easily into it, but you can also filter fairly easily. So if I want to go and filter this database, I'll just go to filter here. I'll click on tags because I want to filter by tag. And then I'm going to filter by the journaling tag. So then that database is whittled down automatically to all the notes that I have in there that are journaling. You can also change the view of it. So if you don't like the table format, you can choose a list similar to this. You can also choose a gallery if you're more visually oriented. If you have images clipped into these, they'll automatically be generated. Otherwise, you'll get a little note preview of the contents of that note. Pretty handy. Now, I think Notion is a strong contender for most people to have some sort of a personal knowledge management system. And here's why. I think Notion gives you the ability to structure your information uh, fairly well, but it also gives you some flexibility within that structuring. What do I mean by that? Well, you have the database here. A database is naturally fairly structured. You have columns. You can have all sorts of information inside of that note in the database, but you can also have the flexibility of structuring that note however you want it to be. You're not just limited to having text in here. You can import images. You can link to YouTube videos. You can do whatever you need to inside of this. If you have rich content you need to pull into a Notion note, you can. It's really quite straightforward to do so. You're not limited to it. The downside of this though is if you want backlinks as a feature, as we talked about, you have to create a database relation, which means you're not going to be able to just type link to page 
and have a database link show up there, you have to go up here and click on the note link, search for the page there and get the backlink. So you're not going to get that backlink in context like you would inside of Roam Research, but it is a very powerful way to approach linking notes together. And once you have it all set up, you don't have to think about it going forward. So what about a software like Evernote? Well, I initially didn't include Evernote on this list, but through some Twitter conversation, I took a look at it, but then I didn't even include it in this video because I was finding the ability to link between different notes and share ideas together to be quite uh, complicated. You have to go click on a note, click on the three dots, click on the copy note link, link, and then copy it and paste it back into the note that you want to link it in. And then it doesn't show the backlinks. Um, you can drag notes apparently on top of other notes and link them together that way, but that requires you to have that note accessible very easily. And so it's just the, the ability to link notes together just wasn't there. Plus, I'm not 100% confident in Evernote's state at this point in time. I know they've been doing a lot of work on improving their infrastructure. And a lot of that is happening behind the scenes, which is really good to know, but there's not a lot of front end improvements that are happening at a very frequent pace. I mean, that's been one of the biggest complaints for a long time with Evernote is that they haven't updated their applications. I know they're working on it, but it hasn't happened yet. And it's been nearly 18 months since they, since they said they were going to do that. So Evernote could be a contender. If you're already using Evernote, I definitely recommend sticking with it. It's a decent tool uh, if you feel confident in it. I personally don't at this point in time for my personal knowledge management needs because it's fairly rigid and they haven't done those updates. So out of all the tools we talked about today, what would I recommend if you're looking to start with a personal knowledge management solution that's not Rome Research? Well, there's three that I would recommend taking a look at. First is Bear. If you're looking for a well-designed, well-supported, easy to use piece of software that gives you the right amount of features and balance, Bear is it. You're not going to get backlinks. You're not going to get plain text files if that's what you need, but you are going to get the ability to wiki link between documents, organize by tags, and basically have whatever you need inside of the software. Second, I would recommend TiddlyWiki with the plugin Stroll. If you're looking for something that has bi-directional linking, if you're looking for something portable and small, that's fairly easy to use once you get it up and running, TiddlyWiki with Stroll is the answer that you're looking for. However, if you're afraid of getting into the technical details of it, you're going to have a little bit of a challenging time with TiddlyWiki because you have to figure out how to sync that file between your different devices, access it, or host it on the web somewhere. My third recommendation would be to look at Notion. As we saw, you can create a database full of notes and clippings very easily with lots of different ways to link them together, to tag them, different attributes you can add in the database. You could even structure this not even as a database, but just as a plain set of pages inside of Notion, if you would so prefer. Notion is a web application. It is obfuscated with closed source code. You don't have access directly to the database or anything like that, but it does have a good export if you ever need to get out of it. You can get markdown contents pretty easily if you needed to get to some different software at some point in time. Well, that wraps up our video on the recommendations for alternatives for Rome Research. My name is Justin DeRose with Effective Remote Work. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one.